Hi, I'm Gordon from Camera Labs, and this is my review of the Rode Wireless Go 2, a compact wireless microphone system that's designed for video creators, interviewers, podcasters, or anyone who wants to improve the audio on their live streams or online meetings. And everything that you hear in this review was recorded with the Rode Wireless Go 2. Arriving two years after the original Wireless Go, the Mark II version shares the same size transmitter and receiver modules, with the transmitter still including a built-in microphone as well as an analog input for an external mic. This means you can either use the transmitter as a traditional wireless pack with a separate lav mic, or actually clip the entire transmitter unit directly to your collar and use it as the lav mic as well, as I'm doing here. So far so similar to before, but in a major upgrade, the Go2 now comes with two transmitter units, allowing you to easily mic up and record two people at once, making it perfect for interviews. The new receiver links to both transmitters at the same time and displays the status of both separately, including their output levels, battery, signal strength, and recording mode. Note that the new transmitters and receiver are not compatible with the old ones. As before, the units are powered by built-in batteries that are charged over USB-C, but in a nice upgrade, you can now use that USB port on the receiver as an audio output. This means you can connect it to computers, tablets, or phones as a standard USB microphone. That means you can use it with any software that you'd use for video calls, live streaming, or even recording a podcast. And a lightning cable is also available for older iPhones. The old 3.5mm analog output remains though for connecting to cameras traditionally, but when the receiver is connected over USB instead, this port doubles as a headphone jack. In a huge usability upgrade, the highly frustrating windshield of the original model has been redesigned with a robust bayonet mount, preventing it from falling off. Rode supplies three mufflers in the box, and while they're still quite large on camera, you can always use a more discreet separate lav mic instead if preferred. In line with recent Rode shotguns, the Go2 now includes the safety channel option, which records the normal level to one channel alongside a much quieter version on the other, thereby protecting you from accidentally high levels. In a pleasant but unexpected upgrade, the transmitters can now also record audio internally as an additional protection from wireless dropouts. Dropouts may however occur less often now, since Rode has also increased the maximum line of sight range from 70 to a huge 200 meters. Best of all, the Wireless Go 2 comes with a receiver and a pair of transmitters for only 50% more than the old version, which only supported one. It costs $299 or £279, and in this review, I'll show you all the new features in practice. Now, the most requested feature for the Rode Wireless Go was the ability to connect two transmitters to one receiver, which would make recording two people so much easier in an interview or a podcast environment. Now, of course, it was possible by buying two normal wireless goes and mixing the analog outputs from two receivers into one. In fact, Rode sells a wire splitter cable and a little dual kind of hot shoe accessory just for that purpose. But the wireless go to makes it so much easier. So to demonstrate this in practice, I'd uh, like to invite Ben from behind the camera. Come on in, Ben. Let's have a chat. Now, this is going to be a uh, socially distant environment. We've measured our distance between us as it's over two metres, isn't it, Ben? 2.4 metres. 2.4 metres. We do things properly on this channel. Yeah. Now, <laughs> this is actually a really good uh, test for a wireless microphone system because there is no way that we would be able to record the audio from this any other way because we're quite far from the camera filming this with quite a wide lens. We're both quite far apart from each other. A shotgun wouldn't do it. The internal mics definitely wouldn't do it. No. We'd both need to have our own microphones. We're far enough away that really you want a wireless system. So this is perfect, wouldn't you say? And you'd end up synchronizing them in software afterwards. It'd just create more work for yourself, wouldn't it? So yeah. one channel, perfect. So we've got um, the receiver set up to record the dual mono. So Ben's going to be on one channel and I'm going to be on the other one. So. Uh, if one of us interrupts the other, so Ben, talk over me. Talk over me really rudely while I can talk about this bit. Can you just stop talking for so one second that so that I can now just say mute something. Ben and you can hear me, which is, uh, he's muted himself. Keep talking. It's he's a, too polite. Well, just keep a, talking. It's a privilege to actually be in the same so video the at the same thing time. About made quite a few is, videos uh, being on Gordon's channel seaside, now. And of course, and, uh, uh, being dual mono, I can, I can mute Ben here or, of course, mute myself. But we're in the same frame at the same time, which is magic. Now, if we were recording the safety channel, we wouldn't be able to do that, but I'm confident, semi-confident, we've got the levels <laughs> set correctly so that we can actually use the left channel for one of us and the right channel for the other one. We're using the built-in microphones on uh, both of the transmitters, so we've got them attached here. And we also have the, uh, the wind mufflers 
mounted on them as well because there is always a steady breeze by the sea. It's not too heavy today, Ben, but it's a nice day. Right, now you were actually an owner of the original Wireless Go. I use it for most scenarios, actually, both indoor shooting when I'm just a few metres away from the camera, but the home office environment that I've got, there's a horrible echo in there, so this is perfect for that. I typically plug in a lav mic just because I prefer that. Um, so going on to one of the things I dislike about it, it's got some bright flashing LEDs on it. It's got a shiny surface. That's it. So I prefer to have a lav mic clipped to myself and then I tuck this in my pocket. Um, and I also use it for filming outdoors as well. I'm quite interested to hear that you use it at home because at home, I think we both have Rode NT-USB mics, which is a beautiful mic. I use that for my voiceover uh, on the B-roll for most of my videos. And I know you've got one as well, but you would actually use this in preference to it because you said there's too much echo in your room. There's too much echo in the room. Plus, I do like the consistency of having the same microphone. So if I'm filming clips outdoors, then I go inside the office, there's a consistency in the audio levels and the, the sound. Yeah. Because the Rode NT-USB, that's an amazing microphone but it makes the other microphones sound not as good. So I like the consistency of using the same mic throughout the video if I can. And that's the really nice thing of what we're able to do here because we're both using exactly the same microphone so that our sound quality should be pretty much the same. And it'll be interesting also to be able to mix them in terms of ambient sound as well, because we are sat by the sea. It's not particularly loud, but you know, the seagulls squawking away. There's the sound of the water lapping against the pebbles. Um, I think this, is all very well, but I'd like to continue this conversation in a more mobile environment. We thought we would do a walking and talking segment, so I have plugged the Wireless Go 2 into my DJI Pocket 2. I've got the wide-angle adapter on it, so Gordon is going to come into frame any second now. Wait, are you Ben Harvey from YouTube? I am indeed, yeah. Do you like my work? I love your videos, they're great. <laughs> Check out Ben's channel if you want to see more of his uh, photography reviews and tutorials. Uh, and you're doing quite a lot with the um, Pocket 2. You've, that's your kind of general out and about filming camera, right? Yeah, a big fan of the DJI Pocket, and this is my go to vlogging camera when I want a lightweight setup just to, just to literally put something in your pocket and go. Yep. But, we're, but we're using it here to test the Rode Wireless Go 2, which of course has the benefit over the DJI system of being able to support two separate wireless microphones because this would be a very, very difficult environment to actually record. I mean, it's the simplest thing. It's two people going for a walk and having a chat. But if you only had one microphone, unless you were very close to each other, which of course we can't do in these COVID times, um, it's going to be impossible to get good audio from you both. As we're walking and talking to test it, I thought we'd have a little chat about the wind mufflers because that was always my biggest bugbear with the original wireless going. But they've changed the system completely here, Ben, haven't they? Uh, yep, so I've never used it before until today and instantly it's kind of a, a push and twist bayonet. It's on the microphone, it's not coming off. One of the biggest and perhaps most unexpected new features of the Go 2 is internal recording and you're actually hearing it in action right now. The audio that I'm using for this section was recorded by the transmitter and exported as an uncompressed WAV file. Pretty neat. But while it can be genuinely useful, don't assume that you're getting a pair of tiny, independent field recorders. Each transmitter can certainly record its audio internally, providing redundancy from wireless dropouts or even issues with whatever the receiver's plugged into. And there's enough built-in memory to store around 7 hours of uncompressed audio or over 40 hours in a compressed format. But unlike traditional field recorders, there's no physical controls to activate recordings, nor any removable storage, or not even the ability to simply drag WAVs or MP3s directly out of them. Instead, everything relies on the Rode Central app, which, at the time of reviewing, was only available for Mac and Windows systems. Once a transmitter is connected over USB, the Central app installs any new firmware updates, then lets you set the option to record, along with choosing between compressed or uncompressed formats. But the actual recording itself won't actually start until the transmitter and receiver units are powered up and wirelessly connected to each other, and it won't stop again until you switch one or both of them off. This means that you will need the receiver present and connected to make any internal recordings in the transmitters, although at least the receiver screen is useful for checking levels while a red dot above each channel indicates which transmitters are currently recording. This unattended process may prevent accidental stops and starts, but means you'll also inevitably end up with lots of redundant audio. Plus, once the unit is full, it'll start deleting the oldest recordings in a rolling process. But again, with seven hours of uncompressed or over 40 hours of compressed audio, you've got plenty of breathing space. 
Just remember to extract those files at the end of each working day. When you want to access the recordings though, you can't just connect the transmitter to your computer over USB and simply drag out usable WAVs or MP3s. Instead, you'll need to use that Rode Central app once more to select a recording, at which point you can preview it with handy markers indicating moments of wireless dropouts, before then choosing to export it. You can export uncompressed audio as a WAV in either the native 24-bit or as an interpolated 32-bit format, although this doesn't appear to be true native 32-bit float, so you'll still need to take some care over setting the levels. Meanwhile, compressed audio is exported as an MP3 in a variety of bit rates up to 320 kilobits per second. As for the original format of the recordings, the native format, that's harder to tell, as checking the storage volumes on my computer just revealed a load of .ug and .eg files. Once you've accessed and exported the desired files and found the sections that you actually want, everything's fine, but I think it could have been so much better if each transmitter simply worked as a standalone field recorder with start and stop buttons, along with the ability to simply drag out ready-to-use MP3 or WAV files once connected to a computer. Instead, there's too much reliance on the Rode Central app right now, which at the time I made this review wasn't available on mobile, so that means many of us will need to configure the internal recording settings while we're still back at home. In addition, I should mention the internal recordings had no levels to adjust, but I haven't saturated any in my tests so far. Rode explained to me that the recording levels had been preset for the built-in or a lav mic for normal voice use, but I'm hoping it also hints at a very broad dynamic range behind the scenes. Who knows, maybe native 32-bit floating point may be possible in a future update. But while I find the workflow unnecessarily convoluted, ironically in an attempt to be simple, it's arguably just a bonus feature you wouldn't expect to find on a wireless mic. As such, while the GoTo could be improved to the point of becoming an effective field recorder, it's still ultimately a wireless microphone system, which considerately also provides some internal protection against wireless dropouts. Okay, now the old Wireless Go had a maximum range of 70 meters, but the new Wireless Go 2 can extend that to up to 200 meters. I cannot imagine any scenario where somebody will be 200 meters away from the microphone, but you've got to test it, right? So I'm going to walk gradually backwards and turn around at various intervals to see whether you can still hear me. But I am also using the internal memory on the transmitter to record the audio. So when it does drop out, I will be able to switch over and I'll tell you when I'm doing that. So three meters distance, I'm gonna turn around and keep talking. I would hope that it definitely would not drop out at this point because uh, I am pretty close. All right, let's go a little bit further. So I'm 10 meters away from the camera and if I turn around, we can hear whether the audio drops out or not. Again, if it does drop out, I can always replace that audio later on. Right, I'm gonna go much further away now. Okay, I'm now at about the 50 meter distance, uh, which is getting close to the maximum range of the previous wireless go, although we previously measured that actually working at 70 meters. And if I turn around, I fully expect that audio to drop out. I think I'm at considerable risk here of being hit by a car or a cyclist or an angry jogger. So <laughs> at least we're filming this and recording it for legal purposes later on, right? I'm gonna go much further. So that was 50 meters. Okay, I'm now at the 100 meter distance. This is roughly halfway through the road's claimed maximum range for the wireless go to, and Ben looks like he's absolutely miles away. If I turn around, I'm absolutely is going to cut out, but hopefully reacquire the signal as soon as I'm facing it. If I turn around, I'm absolutely positive that that sound is going to cut out, but hopefully reacquire the signal as soon as I'm facing it. Right, I'm gonna to go to the maximum 200 meter distance. Okay, now I'm at the 200 meter distance. There are 200 meters as previously mentioned between the transmitter here on my collar and the receiver, which is mounted way back on the Alpha One camera, which Ben is filming with. And while I talk, it's gonna be quite difficult to avoid anybody running in the way. I can see someone running in the way right now, but hopefully you can hear me now if I turn around. Going to 
power. But the interesting thing is, is that even if the transmitter isn't working at this point, even if the radio link is too far, I do have that backup audio that I've recorded. But hopefully you can hear me now if I turn around, I'm absolutely positive it's going to drop out. But the interesting thing is, is that even if the transmitter isn't working at this point, even if the radio link is too far, I do have that backup audio that I've recorded. And now three meters from the camera. Right, I'm glad we got that one over and done with. Okay, I'm really curious to see exactly where that range cuts out when my back is turned from you. Here I am starting off at three meters, so see you in a minute. So three meters, and now six meters, nine meters, the people who laid these balls did it evenly, 12 meters, 15 meters, 18 meters, 21 meters, 24 meters, 27 meters to that red post box there. And I'm still talking. Um, the microphone is still recording audio internally as a backup, so I can always use that. But I'm going to keep talking to see how the sound works out. And I'm really going to be annoying these cyclists, so I'm just going to dodge off the cycle lane for a moment because actually I'm a cyclist too. Down as uh, and I'm really going to be annoying these cyclists, so I'm just going to dodge off the cycle lane for a moment because actually I'm a cyclist too. Uh, lockdown has uh, encouraged me to get back on my bike, and I've really enjoyed cycling. Okay, now I'd like to check out the safety channel feature of the Wireless Go 2. Now what this does is it records your main signal to one channel and records a much quieter, minus 20 dB quieter version to the other channel. Now if you're using both microphones simultaneously, then unfortunately those channels have to be merged on one side and the quieter version on the other side. So what it means is if you have the safety channel enabled, you're not going to be able to separately mix or adjust the levels of those two transmitters. They are merged into one when the safety channel is enabled. And in order to enable the safety channel, you will have to connect the receiver module to your computer and use the Rode application to actually enable that feature. Now to test this, I'm actually stood about four meters away from a Sony Alpha 1 with a 135 millimeter 1.8 lens. So this distance is also ideal for testing a wireless microphone. This is the sort of environment in which you'll be using it. So let's see what happens if we accidentally set the levels too high, spoil the audio, and see if we can actually retrieve a usable audio track from them. Back in a sec. Okay, I'm back, and the thing that's changed is the audio level on the Alpha 1. I've now increased it from 3 to 31. That is the maximum value. Okay, I'm back, and the thing that's changed is the audio level on the Alpha 1. I've now increased it from 3 to 31. That is the maximum value. Okay, I'm back, and the thing that's changed is the audio level on the Alpha 1. I've now increased it from 3 to 31. That is the maximum value. Okay, now it's time for my verdict. And for the rest of this video, I'm using the Wireless Go 2 as a USB microphone with the receiver connected to my MacBook Pro. With the Wireless Go 2, Rode has made significant upgrades over the original model, fixing a number of issues, but also adding some unexpected features and greatly increasing its appeal as a result. Most obviously, the dual transmitters now make recording interviews, whether on camera or for audio-only podcasts, so much easier than before. And from a practical aspect, the frustrating windshields of the original now just twist on and stay put securely. Personally, I'd have been satisfied by these two upgrades alone, but the GoTo also increases the operating distance, broadens the connectivity to include phones, tablets and computers, and includes an internal recording option for backup, as well as an optional safety channel for protection against unexpectedly loud sounds or badly set levels. In my test, the range was genuinely longer, and the windshields no longer fell off, and the internal recording and safety channel protect from both dropouts and saturation, while it's never been quicker or easier to mic up two people for an interview or vlog. I also enjoyed the option of using a wireless microphone on my computer or phone over USB-C for all those Zoom and Skype meetings. As someone who mostly uses the built-in microphone though, I remain a little frustrated by Rode's physical design. The transmitter unit is still distractingly shiny when facing forward, and even if you reverse it behind the collar, there's still those blue status lights illuminating your neck. I reached out to Rode and asked if a future firmware update could possibly disable the transmitter lights for discretion, as the receiver display already indicates if they're actually working. But to be fair, some carefully placed sellotape can provide stealth if preferred, and if you're using the transmitter with a separate lav mic, then the design of the unit, the lights, and even the large windshield all become non-issues. 
Beyond this, there's the unnecessary reliance on the Rode app for configuring and accessing internal recordings, which I detailed earlier. I'm hoping Rode's sly mention of an interpolated 32-bit export in the application means we may see a firmware update in the future that enables true native 32-bit float recordings on the Wireless Go 2. But for now, you'll still need to set your levels fairly carefully or trade the ability to mix the two microphones for that safety channel. But again, it seems churlish to complain as had internal recording been left out of the go-to altogether, I really wouldn't have any issues with the product at all, other than an overly shiny transmitter unit. The fact is, it's already sufficiently compelling without internal recording, so I'd view this feature as bonus icing on the cake. Since its launch, I've come to rely on the Wireless Go for my outside recordings, but with the upgrades, the new Go 2 becomes a compelling option indoors too, while the dual transmitters make interviews an absolute doddle to record. And it's this sheer flexibility that makes the Wireless Go 2 a no-brainer for anyone who wants to upgrade their microphone audio, whether they're worrying about wires or complex setups. It's no exaggeration to say I love it, and I reckon most of you will too. Right, that's the end of this review. If you found it useful, please do give it a like, and don't forget the best way to support my work is simply to subscribe to this channel. It really, really helps. Or if you're feeling super generous, there's links below to shout me a coffee or treat yourself to my in-camera photography book. Thanks for watching and thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.